All right, today we're going to be looking at some more SD plays, specifically from Call of Duty Cold War. So I want to give you a little taste of what Cold War was like, especially on Raid. And I really want to take a deep dive into this final map of the Stage 5 Major. This was the Minnesota vs. Toronto, huge Minnesota comeback. And it capped off with this final map. So I want to just talk more on the Minnesota defenses, the Toronto offenses, that those rounds. And really deep dive into what adjustments are being made and how big adjustments are in search at the pro level. So let's get right into it. Round one. All right. So round one, we're going to have Priesta number four here watching over Standy as he gets out to mid towards this pillar area. He's going to be playing this pillar area to try and basically watch anyone that might be crossing towards ring or crossing two bomb. So he's going to try and deny this a plan at all costs. And it's a really good position to do so because they have to clear both you know, back laundry and mid for them to be able to get a plant uh, if they're going A side. So this is a direct A counter. They're going to have Priesta watching over him just so he doesn't have to watch Zig himself while he gets out of pillars. He can just, you know, no hezzy, go straight to pillars while his teammate has over him. And this is a direct A counter. And what do you know, Toronto does hit A off the start in this round one. And Standy is able to get a first blood with the Semtex. And the whole round here is just Standy being in a menace mid uh, they're just super afraid of him now. As you can see, they're going to try and pick this bomb up back up because Bans was their bomb carry. He gets stuck for the first blood. And it's just, it's really, really disjointed. Kleenex tries to make a play and he, he does. He actually gets a kill back laundry here. But the thing is, you know, they're still super worried about you know, standing in this position here. Um, and for the rest of the round, you'll see, I'll play it out here. They're just continually looking towards mid, as you can see, Insight. They don't know where he is. He's actually just playing a corner here. He ends up going back to P5. From here, they're just trying to make a decision. What are they going to do? Stay A or wrap it towards B. They end up just staying A, trying to like fake a little wrap here. Uh, but they do end up going back towards A. And then a few kills go down. And it's a 2v2. And what do you know? Bomb gets down again, uh, as you can see here. Priesta gets the kill as the guy's crossing the bomb. Standy is still mid, so they know that mid is still a threat, but otherwise, they're, they're still going to try and make a play here. Uh, Cami picks up bomb. They try and go towards mid, and they just get two-piece by Standy. So big plays mid out of Standy, and I want to just really you know, reiterate that because we'll, we'll talk about that in the rounds to come. All right, round five now. Here we're going with Toronto with more of a standard spread. Uh, you know, they're not really trying to take A or B quickly. They're really just playing super slow, trying to work a pick. And on the Minnesota side, once again, they're going to have one guy mid, one guy back laundry. And this time they're sending two guys B. This time Priest is going to be watching over uh, bedroom while Major Maniac hits through bottom pool and tries to get up real close into bedroom. And you'll see him, how he takes this route. Uh, he, he just hugs the wall completely as to not let anyone from bedroom see him. So he really hugs this wall. And what he actually can do is he doesn't even need to go bedroom. He can go up uh, pool stairs as well. So it's like an option play, you, you, whatever you like to see, you know, they already have mid covered. So if he wants to go mid and, you know, maybe hit up Z while his teammate watches over him or something like that, or just play a little corner credit back B here. He can do either of those. It's a little option for him. And they're just going to be playing a little slow because Toronto's playing slow. They don't really have to force the issue at all. And as you can see here, Toronto does send one guy B, but they're going to wrap back towards the A side. And only thing about that is, you know, Kleenex was covering B side, but they didn't see, you know, Major Maniac push through on, you know, his little route there. So, Minnesota has a pretty good defense for this A hit. And as you can see, number one here, who was uh, Standy, he, he's now playing back in P5 in mid once again. So this is going to be a super hard uh, round for Toronto to win because of especially where Major Maniac's playing and, and what Standy is going to be able to do. So they're going to send all guys A here. Now, once Major Maniac, or sorry, once Priesta had watched over Mini Major Maniac, he's going to wrap back to Laundry and play with Dylan here. And from there, they're basically just waiting on number number one and number three to act. Uh, these guys are going to activate, trying to hit the flank, while Toronto is going to be pushing up towards A and trying to get the bomb down. So as you can see here, Toronto is go trying to get the bomb down. What they actually end up doing too is, is a really like 
it's just so hard here it's so hard unbelievably hard they don't have really anything covered because mid is completely open you know the, the b flank is open even though they they tried to cover at the beginning of the round and they have no laundry pressure or control so they're they're full on you know trapped here and from this priest is able to get a pick and at this point they're they're all just getting sandwiched they're getting sandwiched from every direction and from here minnesota is able to take the round pretty easily all right we move to round seven here another toronto offense and as i was saying previously minnesota on their defenses they are super mid heavy especially in the earlier rounds but they were also making some late plays mid so what toronto does to counter this is go for mid themselves and they just send everyone mid to try and chow see what they can do and see any any picks they can get Unfortunately, they don't get any picks, but they do back off number one here who is playing uh, mid to just try and spot anyone that was coming mid. Uh, so Minnesota sees it. The rest of Minnesota, as you can see, Priesta once again watching over bedroom while Major Manek hits the pool stairs to, to the like this option play. And Toronto on the other side, they're already out mid. So Bance is already on this kitchen side of mid with the bomb. And this is a really, really well-designed play by Minnesota or by Toronto. So as you can see, Minnesota, I'll put in the big view here, Major Maniac sees Cami cross here in P5 as he's hitting a pool stairs. But what do you know, Bance is already covering it for him. So Bance is able to see that. He doesn't get the kill, but he does get him weak, backs him away. And this is perfect for Toronto here now because now they don't have to watch their pool stairs because uh, 5 is going to pick it up. Or sorry, 6 is going to pick it up. Five, Number 5, Bance is going to go over and plant. He doesn't have to watch his back anymore. All they have to worry about is anyone that may have been, you know, laundry pushing up to ring. But that's what they have number seven and eventually number eight here for as well. So Bans can get a free plant on this side. As you can see, he's creeping up. All he has to do is slide over or prone over toward it, towards it. And the only guy who can really kill him is number two here with a nade with a stick. But even from this situation, it's just so hard for them to stick because it has to clear the bomb and it, it has to take a really weird angle. So at the most, he's just going to get the bomb carrier weak. And as you see here, even Major Maniac is going to try and deny this, but number six here is still watching it. So really good job at a Camby to keep watching this for his team because that's the only way the plant doesn't go down is if, you know, Major Maniac gets a kill there or gets a kill on the guy bomb carrier. Um, so attach once again, he's going to try and throw this nade here. It, it gets him a little weak you know two hp but that's not enough and what minnesota or what toronto is going to do here is they're literally just going to play from mid they have the bomb planted for mid all they have to do is watch this angle at this point they don't even need to take a side and what a really good play out of insight here is before these guys as they sent for mid at the start of the round they were never watching poolside they were never watching bed so major maniac is actually going to hit a route after he was pool stairs he hits a route but, you know, Insight is really good to pick up on this. It's a really nice play on picking this up with the timing because he realizes no one was watching Bedroom. He picks it up, gets a kill here on Major Maniac. And from here, look at this setup by Toronto. They're literally just playing back-to-back. -back. Any angles that they can be covered are covered. And they're really just watching for, for the flank here. Once again, Insight. And from here, it's just super hard for Minnesota to, to retake this. Uh, when, when you're planning for mid like this and you have super mid control, it's almost wraps. And that's what they're able to do. They're, they're playing P5 super well. And they're able to get the round win and try and make this a little bit closer 4-3. to three. So we talked about the Toronto adjustment. But now I really want to focus on this round, the final round of the entire tournament. This is one that makes the, the comeback for Minnesota. And I want to talk about their adjustments in this round. It's just the next defense right after. And it ends up being the final round of the tournament. So as you can see here, once again, it worked one time. Toronto's thinking, let's do it once again. They're going to go for mid once again to try and see if it can work. Priesta here, he's mid. He's just trying to spot anyone on the cross. He sees once again for mid or a bunch of people mid at least. But this time, they don't send anyone B-side. They're thinking, you know, these guys haven't gone B once this entire game. They've only gone A or done this mid-hit. So we're going to send all these other people A. And it's, it's, it's a really good job out of them. Because what they're going to be trying to do here is get up to ring if they don't see anyone A, thinking that they might do this mid-hit again. And they probably get this info from Priesta as he's, you know, seeing it right now here. And they're going to try and deny them 
from planting from the ring side if they're going to go mid to plant. The thing is, though, these guys are going to be pushing up. So, you know, Priest gets the info. He's going to toss a flash. And now he's going to go play B side. And this is a really, really, really well designed play out of Minnesota to play this defense because they're going to get in a setup that's, you know, pretty much covers everything. Um, as you can see here, Minnesota or Toronto is taking their time. Sandy almost gets a kill here. He doesn't. Uh, the guy gets away. But now he's pushed up ring. And this is a super important position. Cami is watching over this angle. But it, it's super hard to get a kill here if, you know, if he's sliding over to this, you know, white box here. Or, you know, it's really hard to get a kill for, for Cami here. But what Minnesota is going to do on, on their side is, as you can see, Sandy pushes up more. So this way he takes control of anyone that might be pushing out pillars here. And what they do here is number two attach is going to be playing back kitchen he's literally just watching this cross to see if anyone crosses through to money to try and go b and what they have is they have priesta who's going to be playing towards the tiki hut he's going to be playing to try and spot anyone that might be coming pool stairs or through money like back kitchen whatever uh so he's playing this back area of the tiki hut and as you can see here Super well designed because you're, you're covering every area of the map of where they can come at this point. You're cutting off everything. This is a super good adjustment to the mid hit because if you can't plant off the mid hit, then what good is it, you know? So as you can see, he's playing the backside of the Tiki Hut. In this view, you can actually see the crazy cross that the Tatch is playing. So he sees Bant's cross. He also sees Kleenex in his viewpoint. And then now they're going to have Major Maniac who's going to go to the top ring and watch the pool stairs. So... He's going to give info to Priesta. Priesta is the main core point of this whole thing because in case they do go B and once they see these guys cross through Kitchen, they're thinking, oh, it's probably going to be some type of B hit. So Priesta is huge on this play because he's relying just on what the teammates of his are going to be saying. So Attach is going to be saying, you know, two guys going money. I saw two cross, whatever. Plus, now he has Major Maniac who's on top of Ring and can see the whole pool stairs. So in case they wrap out of kitchen, I'll, I'll sh show you here. If, in case they wrap out of kitchen, he sees it. And as you can see, he does. He sees both Cami and Bant both going down towards pool stairs. And now Priesta can play off of this. He's just hiding from you know this money window here. And Attach is now going to wrap towards uh, basketball because they, they think now this is a, a super B hit because no one is going A, obviously. They've seen everyone. Plus, now Standy, who is back at these white boxes, he's going on this full flank garage. So they know where the enemy is. They're trapped mid. And what they're do just going to do is, is straight up play for it. So Minnesota does get the first blood here. And uh, it actually gets traded. I'm, I'm not sure how he gets traded, but really good job out of, out of Kleenex there. And, um, or sorry, it was Insight. Yeah, it was Insight. And Insight then uh, dies, but it gets traded once again. So it's a 2v2, but they know Bomb is down because they killed Bants. And now they're just going to play a tight 2v2. And this is a really good job at a Priest of just, just baiting this guy pool side here. It opens it up for Dylan to get a kill pool. And now it's a 2v1, easy 2v1. They win the round and they cap off their whole run of you know winning five maps straight in a best of nine. So really good job out of Minnesota there, but I really liked... Both adjustments from both teams, and it really goes to show you the mind games that are being played and how advanced it can be at the pro level.